channel that tests sports hypotheses by using computer game engines for replaying the 1990 baseball season as the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. And our change to test is whether or not Alfredo Griffin being out of the starting lineup could help the Dodgers win the National League West, currently four games behind the San Francisco Giants, in second place. Since the last video featuring the Dodgers, they have won again. We have a short three-game winning streak. That game was eight to six. Oh, there's been two games, excuse me. The Dodgers won six to one and eight to six. We'll look at this game first because I clicked on it. Dodgers got out to a big 8-0 lead on Eric Shaw. Had to hold on. Got to a messy fifth inning. And then after that, zero across the board. Big three-run home run by Eddie Murray. Or, excuse me, two-run home run. Three hits by Stan Javier. Three hits from Lenny Harris. As we're only a few moments few games away from finally getting back Mike Sharperson to make our infield complete. Nidlinger started, got into some trouble in the fifth. I made some risky moves, including walking some players. Walked the bases loaded, and I believe uh, Pagliarulo walked in a run, and then Joe Carter had a single and scored two runs. For the three runs there. Uh, after that, Cruz and Spirage finished it off, although in the ninth that was a little scary. The tying runs were on base. This Kaino now has 11 errors. All at shortstop, I believe. Yeah, Eddie Murray with the game-winning RBI and the MVP. The game before that, the Dodgers won on a Eddie Murray three-run home run. So if he's been warm, two home runs in back-to-back -back games. Uh, Belcher started that game. He got the win. Andy Bennis took the loss. Well, he got two back-to-back -back MVPs. Uh, Belcher went six and two-thirds. Very good job. Got yanked. When he got into trouble, Hartley got him out of it. And then Holmes pitched the ninth and gave up a run. Since the game was lopsided. So Eddie Murray on a hot streak right now. Uh, Gibson with two hits. So looking for the sweep tonight against the San Diego Padres before Houston comes to town. Trying to, San Francisco has already won earlier in the game, earlier in the day, excuse me. And it'll be a chance to pull within three and a half games of San Francisco. Who, I was going to show you, um, I forgot before I hit the play button, has not had an injury, has not missed a game due to injury since May 8th. And we're currently on June 17th. Um, I believe their shortstop Uribe came back on that day. And um, since then, about five and a half weeks, they have not missed a game. Uh, no, 
no player, not even backups, have missed a game. So, not rooting for injuries, but the Dodgers have lost Sam Well, Lenny Harris, and Sharperson, all to lengthy injuries. And just trying to catch San Francisco, I think that's part of the reason why they've played so well lately, streak-wise. And they had overtaken us in that period of time, probably the last two weeks, two and a half weeks. So, not a must-win game, but a game we'd like to win, stay close to San Francisco. And pitching today, the Padres, will be the left-hander, Dennis Rasmussen, who has not pitched well, except for very early in the season. He gave up one run, I think, in a complete game against the Dodgers. So, can't take this team lightly. So we'll try to put our best lineup out there today, and we'll go strictly by OPS versus left. That means Eddie Murray will hit fourth for the first time, maybe this season. Cal Daniels will lead off, play left field. Jose Vizcaino gets moved up to number two. Kirk Gibson will play center. Eddie Murray will be at first. Mike Stosha will catch. Juan Samuel continues filling in at second base. UB Brooks will play right field. And I believe we need a third base turn. And I could go with Jeff Hamilton here. But Lenny Harris. Even batting as low as he does against lefties, only a 561 is still better than Hamilton. We may see Hamilton as a defensive replacement. And today's pitching, we're going to start with after the game settles down, Mike Morgan. And we could start with Mike Hartley. He is available. He does have 120 pitches. The difference between the two pitchers uh, and Mike Morgan, not good at home, at least thus far in the season, he hasn't been, is that Morgan is exclusively a starter. Even though he's only given us 58%, 58.3% quality starts, he's a plus plus starter and relief negative closer negative. Whereas Mike Hartley. Do either one. He's a plus starter and a plus plus reliever, minus a closer. So Morgan will be on a short leash, especially due to the fact that at home is a 463. Alright. So we're gonna look and hope for three to four runs before pulling him, but he's gonna be on a short leash. So if he gives up a three-run homer, I have to seriously consider moving on quickly to Harley. The winds are in from left field, so that's good news, 68 degrees. Rasmussen's current ERA is 612. He has three wins, and one of them was against the Dodgers, so we'll see how that goes. Let's play ball. There we go. First up, Biff Roberts, who has done well against the Dodgers in this series, and he hits a home run right off the bat. Biff Roberts is not known for a home run hitting. Uh, let's see. His fourth home run, 343 feet, and that's a bad way to start. All right, again, short leash. Down 1-0 already. Here's Lynn. He hits one deep to right. That looks playable for Brooks. He's got it. One out. Here's Alomar. He hits one down the line to right. Brooks is over. 
He has it. Santiago, who I do not greet back to the lineup with his eight home runs, comes up next. Get the ground ball to Sam Well over to first. And that's it. A solo shot by Roberts. Padres score one. The Dodgers coming up. Cal Daniels walk. Next up is Vizcaino, who's supposed to hit lefty as well. And he gets a base hit to right. Let's see if Daniels tries to go to third on Lynn's arm. Fred? Oh, 97% chance we're trying that. Just throws it into Alomar. All right, runners at the corners. Nobody out. And here's Gibson. And he hits a ground ball. This could be two. We'll see. We're going to go home. Alomar could throw, but I don't think he's going to. He doesn't. And they only get a force. So one out. Daniel scores. We're tied at one. And Gibson is at first. And he's not going in here anywhere with Eddie Murray, who's had a home run in his last two games. Comes up against Rasmus and throw over. Nothing doing there. Pitch to Murray is a base hit in the center. So the Dodgers have already scored as many runs. And a poor play by Templeton to get to it. Gibson moves to third. The Dodgers have scored as many runs as they did against Rasmus in the last time out, and I believe he threw nine innings. So runners at the corners. One out for Sosha. That's the guy you'd want up right here. First to throw over, Murray better get back. He's not going anywhere. Pitch to Stosha. It's fly ball to center. That might get Gibson home. It looks pretty deep. Carter has a good arm, though. Makes the catch. Two outs. Gibson tags. And he doesn't need a percentage chance. He walks in. 2-1 Dodgers lead. All right. Runner at first. Murray. And here comes Samuel with two outs. And he has a ground ball. Looks like to Templeton. He's got it. Over to first, it's going to be close. And they get him. All right, so the Dodgers get two hits, two runs. Leave Murray. After one inning, it's 2-1 Dodgers. Let's see if that helps Morgan. I don't know. Is this a 12th error? That's a 12th error by Vizcaino. And Tagliarolo is safe at first. That's not Morgan's fault. He's going to have to pick it up here against Stevenson. The fly ball to center. Gibson back. Makes the catch. Pagliarillo going to try to tag? No. One out for Joe Carter. And there's a deep fly ball to center field. Gibson trailing back. He's got it. Whew. Two out for Templeton. See if Morgan can get out of this. Comebacker over to Murray, and he gets through the second. All right. Still have the lead. We're through an inning and a half. 2 1 Dodgers. Here's Brooks getting a chance to play against the lefty. He walks for Harris. Not very good against lefties, but we're going to let him have a shot. And he laces one into right. And it gets past Lynn. There goes Brooks. Can Brooks score on this? Pretty slow. But he'll score. It's 3-1 Dodgers on the... Ooh, he's going for three. Harris is safe. His third triple of the season. Wow. For a guy who doesn't hit lefties, that was a pretty big hit. And the Dodgers score again and lead 3-1. This is kind of what you were hoping for here at home today. Mike Morgan has not had a hit in 28 at-bats. And we're not going to bunt here. We're just going to let him try to swing. See what happens. And it's a fly ball to center. We're not going to try it unless it's a good percentage. Carter coming in. He has an eight arm. 73% chance and we're not taking it. Would have been nice, but that's only the first out. And Cal Daniels is up next. We don't want to throw it out the plate. All right, Daniels. Good numbers. 352 average. On base of 533, slug of 664, 
for an OPS of 1.197. like to break this open right here. Against Rasmus in the pitch. There's a base hit in the center field. So the run scores regardless. And it's now 4-1, Dodgers. All right, this Caino, who had a single his first time up, has good numbers as well. 392, 520, 392 slug for an OPS of 912. Comes Rasmussen's pitch. And there's a ground ball. Is it back to the mound? He's got it. Can it be two? They get Daniels, but this Caino beats it out. Two outs in the inning for Gibson. Great numbers here, too. 312 on base of 534. Slug of 587 for an OPS of 1.121. Pitch to Gibson is a base hit in the gap. Can Vizcaino score? Lynn gets to it. Throw to second. Gibson's safe. Vizcaino scores. 5-1 Dodgers as they've scored three here in the second. That's Gibson's 11th double of the season. He's in scoring position for Eddie Murray. And you start to wonder how much more is San Diego going to leave him in for? This is the start you'd want. Kind of a similar to last game, but now i got to be quicker. I'm pulling the starting pitcher so it doesn't get close at the end of the game like the last one. Eddie Murray has got good numbers as well. 332 average, 429 on base, 494 slug, and the OPS of 924. The Padres have come to town, and the Dodgers' offense has gone back to normal. We've got hits up and down the lineup. That's good to see. Not depending on any big home run. But Eddie could deliver. Again, he's had multiple games of a home run in a row. He's looking for a third. Versus Rasmussen. But nope, it's a ground ball to Pagliarulo. He throws to first. And that ends the inning. But the Dodgers score three. And after two innings, they lead five to one. All right. Morgan will now take on his opposite number. Rasmussen. Unless they hit for him. Let's see. Nope. And he gets a base hit. And he gets a double. That's his first of the season. He was hitting 200, though. All right. Morgan's got to settle down. See if he can give me a little bit more. <sighs> Rasmussen at second. Nobody out. And here's Roberts, who homered his last time up. He has four home runs on the season. See what Morgan can do. Is a ground ball to Harris. Big hop. Throw to first, and they get him. Does Rasmussen move up on the play? He does not. One out for Fred Lynn. All right. A little below average numbers. Let's see. We're going batter by batter. Gets a ground ball to Sam Well. Over to Murray. Good time to not have an error. Rasmussen moves to third. Two outs for Alomar. The Santiago on deck. It's a pop-up. Looks like it's this Caino who already has an error in this game. Not this time. And Morgan escapes. And Pat Clements is coming in to pitch. Which, again, I don't understand why the computer does this sometimes. Although, it didn't hurt them. They should have pinch hit for the pitcher if they were going to pull him. The pitcher got a hit, though, which is about as good as a pinch hitter would have done. Maybe better. Regardless, we're through two and a half. It's 5-1 Dodgers. So shall we lead off. And he laces one into center. Base hit. Still facing a left-hander, even though Rasmussen is out. So, lineup's going to stay the same. And Samuel blasts one to right. Lynn picks it up. Is Sosha going to try for third? See, a two arm. Yeah, he's going for it. He'll make it easily. So Clements comes in, but he's not pitching any better than Rasmussen. His season so far is one win, one loss, two innings, six hits, 
a walk and a strikeout for an ERA of 18 on the real season, 415. His whip is 3.5, and he's almost gotten to 3 right now with no outs. That'll bring up Brooks, who scored a run on a walk back in the second. Yep. All right. Runners in the corners. Nobody out. Let's see what Brooks can do. He walks. All right. Keep the chain moving. Pass the baton. That's how the offense works. Here's Lenny Harris, who had a triple his first time up against the lefty. Not known for his percentage against lefties, but a good hitter. 290 average. See if he can get a run home here. And he gets a base hit up the middle. And the chain keeps moving. Let's see if Samuel tries up Carter's arm. 51% chance we're going to hold. The outfield arms on the 8 for Roberts and 8 for Carter, but then Lynn a 2. All right. Morgan is up there, and we could pinch hit here. But I don't. I want to get as much as I can out of Morgan. So, leading 6 1, we'll take the out here. Uh, we're not going to bunt. He's a six bunt. But we'll let him swing. And it's a fly ball to Carter again. Is this one deep enough to score Samwell? Carter's still coming in. Got an eight for an arm. 73% chance. <laughs> Excuse me. I think that's about the same as before, and we're not going to try his arm. Nope. Not with one out and Cal Daniels up. So, base is still loaded. Great numbers for Daniels. 299 average, 538 on base, 507 slug, 1045 OPS, 1.045. All right, let's see what Cal can do. He's one for one with an RBI. It's a fly ball to right, and that's deep. Lynn's going back. Is this a grand slam? Is it possible? Nope, it's coming down. Lynn's going to make the catch, and with the two arm. No, it's off the wall. I thought he was going to make the catch. Brooks scores, Harris scores, Samuel scored first, and on a two, uh, excuse me, with one out, a double, his 15th of the season, the bases get emptied, and a three-run double for Daniels. He has four RBI in the game, and the Dodgers lead 9-1. to one. Whew, I thought that was going to be caught. First, I thought it was a home run. And the, the, that's one great aspect of the action PC game that I can recommend to you is, unlike OOTP, not to say anything bad about it, but after playing it for a while, I could tell what was going to happen. There was zero drama, right? Once you saw the pitch delivered, you knew what was going to happen. Unless there was an error. Occasionally that happens. But they've designed the graphics, which again is a, a great plus for this game. The ball movement versus other simulations where nothing moves. Or is there a static move? It's, they just, they're end up at second. You know, there's no movement. Um, they have designed it in a way where the ball path looks like a certain conclusion, and it'll change. Like, you'll see a fly ball, and you'll say, well, I know that's an out for sure. And it'll stay on that path till the very last second, and then it'll shift, and it'll be a home run. And so there is that drama involved where you think, you know, based on the path, what's going to happen, and then it changes. Uh, we've seen Tim Belcher get a, <laughs> a ground rule double as it bounced off an outfielder's body, their, their, their shape over here. Not Fred Lynn. This was a previous game. But um, so you don't really know what you think is going to happen. You can guess. And you can think you know what's going to happen. But it's not always right. And that, again, builds drama and makes the game more fun. Instead of just, you see Daniels move over here to second base. There's no movement of the ball. Um, or it's it's a, a uh, graphic that you've seen before and you, you figured it out as soon as the ball leaves the pitcher's hand or at least the batter's bat. Okay, enough ranting. Anyhow, the Dodgers have scored two in the first, 
three in the second, four in the third so far with one out. And they have Cal Daniels at second base for Vizcaino, who has a hit and two at bat against Clements. And he strikes out. That might be the first strikeout for San Diego pitchers. Either well, either way, there's two outs for Gibson. And he hits a fly ball to right. That looks playable for Lynn. And this time, I am correct. And he makes the catch. We're through three innings. The Dodgers lead 9-1. to one. And Mike Morgan's going to pitch for a while. Again, as soon as I say words like that, something happens and I start looking at the bullpen. So, again, if you want to become a human contradiction, manage a baseball team. Ground ball to Samuel. Over to Murray. One out. He should pitch better with this lead. We'll see. Strikes out Pagli Rulo. Two outs for Stevenson. He gets a base hit to right. Brooks picks it up and throws it back in. One, at, one on, two outs for Carter. Joe blasts one down the line. That'll score a run. Is that over the fence or not? Daniels goes to collect it. Picks it up. Stevenson to third. He'll score. Carter with his 11th double of the season. It's 9-2 to two Dodgers. Okay, here's Templeton with two outs. It's a ground ball to Samuel. Over to Murray. And that's it. We're through three and a half. The Padres score a run on a single and a double. But they trailed the Dodgers 9-2. to two. Bottom of the fourth, Eddie Murray. It's a fly ball to right. It's deep. See, this is the tracking, but it's going to be caught by Lent. Nope, it's off the wall. Again, I think I that is my fault. Where you put up the, the wall dimensions on the field, I think I messed that up. So I'm going to have to go back and check that on the ballparks, but it looked like it was going to be caught, and then it was off the wall, so... I'm happy with the double, but it didn't look as good after I've already told you how great this game uh, animation is. That was my fault. Um, that should have been better to see visually. So I apologize for that. After this game, I will go back and see if I can see you place the, the dimensions of the top of the fence and the bottom of the fence. And I did a poor job. So I will go back and try to fix that. Either way, Eddie Murray has that second. That's his 11th double of the season. I think that's the third time we've seen an 11th double for Daniels, Joe Carter, and now Eddie Murray. And the Dodgers have a runner at second with nobody out. So she is up there. See if he can knock him in. There's a base hit to center. See if Eddie tries Joe Carter's arm and what the percentage is. He probably doesn't. Up 9-2. to two. Clements is stuck out there because I don't think the Padres have many pitchers available. So he's already pitched past his expected pitch count. So this should be gravy this half inning. Juan Samuel steps up. You don't see Juan Samuel with numbers like this usually. 464 average, 579 on base, slug of 689 for an OPS of 1.267. Now that's something you might see with Murray or Daniels. Rarely with Samuel. So you know what that means. He will strike out. Runners at the corners come up, but we're not bunting. And he blasts one over Templeton in the left field. I was wrong. Murray scores is 10 to 2, so she will hold it second. With nobody out. Here comes Brooks. And these are excellent numbers as well. 394 average, 479 on base, 584 slug for an OPS of 1.063. This has become a laugher. And this should be a statistic patter for anybody who's up hitting. So she second, Samuel at first, nobody out. Brooks steps up. Hits a fly ball. Center field. Carter drifting to his right, not back. So this should be caught. It is. We're not going to try to advance. No. 
That's the first out. Bill Carter seeing a lot of chances out there in center. Next up is Harris. He has good numbers. 288, 433, 483, 916. Again, Clements well over his expected pitch count. He's being a sacrificial lamb for the team, trying to save the bullpen. And he strikes out Harris. And he should get out of this inning now with two outs facing Morgan, who's going to continue to pitch. Ground ball to Pags. He gets him at first, and that's it. Dodgers get one. Make it make up for the Padres score earlier in the half inning. And through four, it's 10-2 Dodger. Clements grounds back to the mound. That's one out for Robert. He also hits a comebacker. Morgan gets him. That's two out for Lynn. Should be free and easy for Mike right now. Lynn hits one deep. And Brooks makes the catch. And that's it again. The computer allows the pitcher to hit. And then pulls him immediately. I don't understand why that happened. But it did. So that's it. As they bring in Craig Lefferts with his 436 ERA. He's 0 and 4 on the season. He's given up 42 hits in 33 innings, but he does have 7 walks to 28 Ks. A whip of 1.485 is not good. So he's going to be asked to just eat some innings here, I guess. And he'll face Cal Daniels. I think after this at bat, we're going to start making some defensive changes just to make sure people don't get injured. And Daniel strikes out. Is this guy, you know? He strikes out. Boy, two strikeouts in a row. Here's Gibson. Got the good morning, the good afternoon, and the good night instead is a ground ball to Alomar, who throws to Leffert's covering. I guess Stevenson ran too far to his right. And a 1-2-3 innings for the Padres for the first time today. We're through 5. 10-2 Dodgers. Eddie Murray should get another at bat. I don't really have anybody to cover Eddie, unfortunately. Sharperson would usually do that job. Um, but we can get Daniels out of the game now. And Jose Gonzalez will play center. And Gibson will move to left. And that's how we're going to go right now. And we could bring in Hamilton to play third. To get this Kaino out of the game and put Harris at short. Harris's range is a one. But this Kaino is a very important player on this team. He's become because he's the only fielding short. Well, <laughs> this fielding has gotten poorer as the season has gone on. Um, one other thing that I'm kind of worried about is what's his durability right now? He's only a four. So that's something we could do, although Harris at shortstop last year. He would be the only person. I don't think I'm ready to do that just yet. But hopefully the game stays the way it is, then I can do that. Here's a fly ball to Brooks from Alomar. On out. Santiago walks. Tags. He hits a fly ball to the right, and it's deep. Brooks goes back, and it's off the wall, the base of the wall. You see that? The animation, that was pretty poor. That's his 12th double of the year. They hold Santiago at third. I don't know why, but uh, they do. And with one out, there's two runners in scoring position. 
for Stevenson. And again, I'd like to pitch Morgan as far as possible, but I don't want to get into any serious trouble here. If he goes up two runs, I'm not really scared of that. But let's see what he can do here. Here's a fly ball to Gonzalez. That should be caught based on the trajectory. And he makes the catch. That's two outs. Santiago should score easily without a throw. It's 10 3. Here's Joe Carter. He does have power, but. His numbers don't show it. 220 average. OPS is 652. There's a fly ball to left. That's where the wind is blowing in. 15 miles an hour. So Gibson should have that. And we're done through the top of the... And we're going to the middle of the sixth. We just finished the top of the sixth. Morgan goes sixth. Gives up three. The Dodgers lead 10 to three. That's not bad for Mike Morgan. I mean, with this offense, you should be able to do that. At least be in the game. So, Mike Hartley should not play today. The rest of the bullpen should be able to get the last nine out. But we're still not done with Morgan yet. Eddie Murray stays in. He gets his third hit of the game. A single to left center. He's at first for Sosha. He's probably in his last at-bat. It's a ground ball. This should be an easy double play. Alomar makes a great play to Templeton, but Sosha beats it out. So fielder's choice. Eddie's erased, and I'm okay with that because he didn't get injured. Sosha will be pinch run for because I don't want him to get hurt. So a chance to see the ageless wonder Rick Dempsey come and pinch run. <laughs> he doesn't usually do that. He'll stay in and catch. As Samuel steps up with one out against Leffert, and he strikes out. Dempsey still at first for Brooks. Leffert's pitch is a base hit to left. Brooks gets his first hit of the game, the game and the day. 53% chance for Dempsey to make it to third, and that's not going to be happening. And that'll bring up Harris, who's two for three with two RBI and two runs scored. There's a chance to add to that against a left-hander. Try to improve his batting average against lefties, and he hits a ground ball. Is that back to... Nope, that looks like it's to Templeton. And he gets him in a quick one over at first. It's a close play. It's Alomar who makes the backhanded play and gets him. We're through six, two-thirds of the way through the game. It's 10-3 Dodger. Mike Morgan at 93 pitches. Oh, yes, I'm missing a catcher. And he's made catcher. And I'd love to replace Eddie Murray. But I, I don't have anybody that can play first base. The only other person is Mike Sharperson. So Eddie's going to have to stay out there. One good thing about Eddie, his durability is a nine. So hopefully he doesn't get hurt in the last three innings. When Sharperson comes back, that'll be nice to know I can flip him over to first. The only other move I really have is we can move Stan Javier into Brooks's role, and he can play right field. Gives him a chance to play. I don't think he's played too many consecutive games, only two. Brooks is just terrible in the outfield. In case you don't believe me. He's a negative two and only 155 innings. So three poor plays to one great play. There's my evidence, Your Honor. And Javier is not, at least not in right field, a terrible fielder. And in right field, he's a plus one run scored. Three great plays to zero poor ones. Only one error and 309 innings. So. All right. Again, a consideration is if you played this guy too many games in a row, just leave him on the bench because he'll be tired. That's how the game works. Uh, even if you put in a guy for one at bat or a half inning to play defense, the game counts it as if he's played a game. 
And if you play too many consecutive games in a row or so many days in a row, your guy's going to need a rest. Javier has a nine durability, though, so. But he'll still need days off. It's happened before. Okay, enough pontificating. The only move left is to bring in Hamilton and take this Cayeno out. Which I might do, but I'm so scared of. I mean, this is the Dodger team in 1990 that lost, I believe, eight run or nine run league in the ninth inning against the Phillies. So we are not the best defensive team of all time. I don't think we're the worst, but we're much closer to that side of the spectrum. All right, Morgan at 93 pitches. See how much farther he can go. Templeton with the base at the left. Gibson picks it up. Templeton going to try for two. No, not down by seven. Here's Lefferts. He's going to hit for himself. And a base hit. This is the second time a pitcher, and Lefferts may get pulled after this half inning. But we've given up a hit to two pitchers. And Morgan has given up two consecutive hits as we go around for the fourth time through the order. So close eye on Morgan. This might be it. Facing Robert. There's a ground ball. Looks like it's to Vizcaino. He shuffles to Samuel. Pivot. Nope, that's it. They get one. Lefferts is removed from the base paths. And there's runners at the corners with one out for Lynn. We're going to look at the box. The outcome box doesn't scare me. None of these percentages do. I don't see much of a home run shot. So we're going to pitch and see what happens. Ground ball to Samwell. There's only a 24% chance for a double play. So we're not going to throw home. We'll give up the run. Lynn, the old man, beats it out. Again, old relative term for a baseball player. So Lynn gets an RBI on the ground out. They erase Roberts from the base path. Templeton scores. They erased Lefferts from the ball. Thanks, Let's see if we can watch a replay of that. Yeah, Roberts from the base pass. Templeton scores. Lefferts had been removed from the base pass. Get the speedy Roberts out. Okay, so the run scores by Templeton. It's 10 4. Lynn at first. Playing fast and loose right now. In a real close game, he would have been removed. But right now, he's helping me keep my bullpen fresh. So, Lynn with a 52% chance. I don't think he's going anywhere. Let's face Alomar. And he races one into the right field. Is it going to get past Javier? No. Nice job. Gets to it. That might hold Lynn at third. Nope. He's going to score anyhow. And it's 10-5. And Morgan's saying, hey. You could have pulled me, helped my ERA out. Now I'm actually worse. But you got to do what's best for the team. 10-5, you still should be able to get seven more out. Facing Santiago. Good numbers for Santiago. 738. He has eight home runs on the season. I'm going to take a chance and see if I can get him through this batter. If not, then we're probably going to the bullpen. The ground ball to Samwell. Quick one to Murray. And they get out. Morgan gives up two. And that's probably it for him. But he's still going to hit. I still have the opportunity to, to pitch him another batter or two. I'm going to do it. Here's Gonzalez with one out. It's a ground ball to Stevenson. He'll take it to the bag himself. Here's Vizcaino. Two outs. He hits a ground ball. Leverts has pitched pretty well. He had a rocky start. But he's put up a couple zeros now. 
And the Dodgers haven't scored since the fourth. We're through seven. It's 10-5 Dodgers. Mike Morgan almost over the expected pitch count. I seem to remember Pagliarulo having a reverse split. So we're going to let the right hander pitch to him. Let's see if you can get him out. There's a fly ball to right. Don't know where it's going. Is it gone? Oh, yeah, it's gone. And that'll do it for Morgan. Pagliarulo will circle the bases, thankfully not with anybody in front of him. And that's 10-6, to 6, Dodger. And Morgan is over, and that's it. All right. Who are we going to here? Hopefully we won't have to see Mike Hartley at all. He could perhaps start in the next game. Who's left that can finish this game and get me six outs? Holmes is down. Howell, I'd like to not use. Still have a four-run lead. I'd like to not use any of the lefties that I care about. Oh, Mike Munoz is interesting. We'll let him start. And then if it comes into panic mode, it's too close. We'll see. Here comes Jack Clark. Oh, boy. Well, at least the bases are empty. Good numbers for Clark. He could easily power this one out. He has 10 home runs on the season. we got to see what Munoz can do, though. Here we go. Ground ball. This Caino over to first is going to be close. And he saved Jack Clark with an infield single. That's rarely seen. Here's Carter against Munoz. And he hits one deep to center. I don't think it's gone, though. Gonzalez drifts it back. Makes the catch. Five outs to a win. I always like to make these games interesting, don't I? One out for Templeton. Gotta see what this kid can do. He hits a fly ball deep to right. Gonzalez going back. Javier going back. It's off the wall. Or is it caught? It's caught. Javier makes the catch. Let's see how close that was to getting out. Deep fly ball. Drifts to his right. Heading back. He's waiting. It doesn't even say he's on the track, but it sure looked like it from the animation. Two outs. Four outs from a win. And here's Lefferts. you got to let these guys pitch. I mean, otherwise you don't know what you have. When you get down to the nitty-gritty part of the season, that's the perfect time to use him. He's going to let Lefferts, who's got a single up there again. Hits it to Samuel. They go the short way to Vizcaino, and that's it. So, the Padres score one on the home run by Pags, and that's it. Clark gets an infield single. He's stranded. Well, he's not stranded. He makes... To get him a second for the last out. You know what I mean. So we're through seven and a half, ten six Dodgers. And Lefferts comes back out to pitch again. This time against Gibson. And he walks. We're going to pull this guy, you know. Here's Eddie Murray looking for his fourth hit. He hits one deep to left, but it doesn't look like it's out of the park. Roberts has got it. Gibson retreats. At first, <clears throat> excuse me, as much as I want to steal, I'm not going to steal here. There's Dempsey. That could be two. Hit the Templeton to Alomar for one. But Dempsey beats it out. A bunch of slow catchers have beaten out double play attempts. Sosha got past one, and Dempsey is the other. So Samuel will get a chance. He's had a good game for Samuel. Two for four. A run scored and an RBI. Good numbers here against Lefferts. And he strikes out. All right, we're through eight. Ten, six Dodgers. And I'm going to cross my fingers and try something here. And that something is Jeff Hamilton's going to come in for this guy, you know. So hopefully he, well, he can't get hurt now. And he's going to play third. And Lenny Harris will go to short. And hopefully he won't get hurt. He's a one. So if you see a lot of base hits to the left side, you know why. And the Dodgers will try to finish up here with Mike Munoz. Expected pitch count of 20. 
And he's facing the top of the lineup for the fifth time. The, the Padres are going to get the hit. Four-run lead. Come on, Mike. Let's get through this. Three outs from a win. Great numbers for Bip. Had a great series against the Dodgers. 496, 666 on base. Slug of 534 for OPS of 1.200. Cross your fingers. Here we go. It's a ground ball to Hamilton. He makes a great play. And he comes in off the bench and shows you right there what he's good at. And that is playing third. One out. Two outs from a win. Here's Fred Lynn. Good numbers for him. 412, 586, 412 for an OPS of 998. He scored a run and driven one in. And Joey Cor after all that, Joey Core is coming in to pinch it. And his numbers are pretty similar. Average of 408. 581, slug of 408 for an OPS of 989. So here we go. And he strikes him out, all that for a strikeout. And Munoz is just over his expected pitch count. Let's see if he can get Alomar and get out of here. Look at these numbers 471, 717 on base. 717 on base? There's a 71% chance. You round up 72% chance he's going to get on base. 514 slug for OPS of 1.231. He has two homers on the season. He could homer here. Munoz is tired, but it's just a base hit to left. Gets past Harris amazingly with the one rating. At least we'll have some data on him playing short. All right, Alomar could run. I don't know why he would. Here's Santiago. <laughs> Look at these numbers. 555. 787 on base. Slug of 575 for an OPS of 1.362. The tying run is on the bench in a game that we led 10-2. to two. Uh, I'm not going to let him get to the on-deck circle. We'll go to the bullpen if he can't get Santiago out. But he's going to get a chance here. He's throwing the 25 pitches. So, here we go. And there's the base at the right. Javier cut it off? Yes. Okay. So, that's it. Munoz can't finish it for us. Alomar moves to third on a single. Javier's arm is too weak. And here comes Pagliarula. And look at these numbers. 560. On base of 806. A slug of 746 for an OPS of 1.552. On deck is the tying run. So we got to get him out of there for rescue him. Hate to use anybody here, but we're going to have to. And I don't know if this qualifies as a save situation or not. I don't think so. So who could get me out of this? Hartley for sure could. Maybe Wetland? Jim Gott's been pitching well lately. Jay Howell? I don't want to use Alexi. If I can help it here. Jack Clark on deck. Don't want to really face him. Uh, Baron Holmes is out. Hmm. Jay Howe pitched in the last game. Jim Guy has not. Okay, Jim, can you get me an out? Runners at the corners, 10-6 Dodgers. There you see the numbers. Not a high slug. Edgar Lewis had a good game, 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run. See if Jim can finish this off. Nope. There's a base hit in the center. And the tying run comes to the plate in a game that we led 10-2. Santiago moves to third. Jack Clark can hit home runs. On deck is Joe Carter who can hit home runs too. When you play around here too much, 3 2 pit.
could get a loss. Oh, this would be horrible. Only need one out. Jay Howell's not good. Hartley is decent. I really don't want to use him. I could walk him right here. Take the bat out of his hands. Carter's on deck, and he's going to hit home runs, too. Base is loaded. All he needs to do is hit a double, and he can tie the game. Who has got Jack Clark? I can't fool around anymore. My part was Keep doing this. Alright. There's no guarantee here. You can get him out. Giving up three home runs in 76.1. Do you want to face Clark or do you want to face Carter? Clark with 10 home runs. Pretty long. Carter has 11 doubles. He's had one in this game. Face 680 OPS against righties. Eye popping numbers. Six home runs and 41 at bat against right handers. Well, you thought this game was over and there was no more strategy. You were wrong. Partly one of my better pitchers. Period. He has given up two home runs against righties. But not many. Better against righties than lefties. Joe Carter hitting only 225. How many home runs? Yes, uh, But he'd only need a double at that point to tie the game. Wind's still blowing in at 11 miles an hour. We're going to pitch to him. Here we go. And he strikes him out. <laughs> All of that for one pitch. And he gets him. And the Dodgers hang on. I let them make it close. Trying to stay away from Hartley. And I end up having to use him anyhow. We'll see how much that matters in the future. Get the win, though. Pulled it within three and a half. Man, oh man. Up 10-2, to two, the Dodgers offense completely goes flat the rest of the way. And the Padres score five runs and make it close, having runners at the corners with two outs. And bring up Jack Clark. Exercised a few demons there, though. Pitching to him. At least got him. And that's the most important part. The Dodgers, in the first half of this game... Show off some offense. Two hits from Daniels, including four RBI. Uh, Vizcaino with a hit. Gibson with a hit. Murray with three hits. Forgot about him, including a double. Sosha with two hits. Or he got pulled. Samuel, two hits. Brooks even with a hit. Harris with two hits. 
He had three hits the last game. He's got five hits in two games. Mike Morgan actually pitched decent until I left him in too long just to try to save the bullpen. Gave up six runs, but got the win. Mike Munoz comes in. Doesn't show much there. Gives up three hits and a run in an inning and two-thirds. Got can't get the last out, but Hartley can. On a strikeout of Jack Clark, and the Dodgers hold on. I, I get is that a save? You got a save out of that? You got a save. Wow. 10-2 game. But, again, I told you this team blew a 8 or 9 run inning or lead in the ninth inning in the real season. So, at least they did win the game. This guy, you know, with his 12th error. And you see the poor plays and the great plays. So she gets the game winning RBI. Cal Daniels gets the MVP. And I'm going to need a nap. Or at least some uh, relaxing music to listen to after that game. Stressed out. In a game where the Dodgers led 10-2, to we have to hang around for the last out and use Mike Hartley to get out of it. But they do. And that's all that matters. Um, after the game repopulates the page, the Dodgers should be three and a half behind San Francisco with their 35th win. And if my math is right, and we can click on this, Mike Sharperson should be back for the next game. Houston comes to town. They do sweep San Diego. Nice to see Jack Clark hitting the road, not celebrating. Again, that three-run homer would have only tied the game. Again, that would have been a huge letdown, but I think pitching to him versus pitching to Joe Carter with a chance for a double to tie the game is a better opportunity. I know Jack Clark is good, but he strikes out too. And let's see when this page repopulates if Mike Sharperson should be back. It says right here, 618, and we will be happy to welcome our infielder back. He plays all the positions, and he can hit. Boy, can he hit for an infielder. In terms of run saved, not so much. But let's focus on the good stuff. We'll be happy to have him back to start off a series against Houston. And the infield and the team will finally be at full strength to try to catch these Giants who lead by three and a half games. If you stay till the end, I appreciate it. It looked like a blowout, and it, I turned it into a close game. But the Dodgers win. And they continue their quest to win the National League West. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Missed It by How Much.